Hi lovelies, welcome. I'm so glad you could be with me today. I hope you're all doing really well. We're doing the Tuesday Twin Flame Tarot. As I know, a lot of you have had to explain that um, I usually do it as a picture message on my community tab, uh, as I do a daily theme for every day of the week. Um, but when I have the energy, I like to incorporate it into an actual video reading for you so that you can... Um, we, we can get more in depth with it, okay, as to what's going on with your connection, your person. Um, a lot of people are going through challenges independ like individually, let alone in a connection with another person. Um, so there's been so much stuff, hasn't there? Um, not just in your journey with your twin, but just this year in general, in the last two years, uh, with COVID, with um, missing family, you know, members and, and not being able to be with people or not be able to travel or get out and just create and be free. And finally, things are moving on, on and upwards now, guys, which is really awesome. And we've only got, God, how long till the end of the year? Not long at all. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a good chance for people to get together and heal as well you know a lot of people need healing in their connection in their relationships and that's something that can come through as well and just being with each other in each other's presence if you can't be physically with that person they'll be with you in spirit our loved ones in spirit are around us always um, so if you have a twin flame in spirit they're looking after you they're looking over you and this in your connection um, working from the other side to ensure that healing is brought into your life um, and yeah even those who are in the 3d here living here in the 3D, um, even just in the 5D, okay, whether someone is here on earth or not, in the 5D is where all the magic happens, it's where all the healing happens. Um, so if something is really going on in your connection where it's really sad or you're miserable or you're missing your person or there's just this um, inability for some reason to just make things gel and work, um, could be the divine timing kind of thing, you know, where things are just not working in your favors. Um, it's just, you know, you can just go within and talk to your person and pray and, you know, pray to a higher power to come in and help you seek the answers for that. Um, call in and pray for a resolution, for healing. And, uh, you know, we always got to work on ourselves. That's the whole point. Um, you know, to be able to, we can't expect someone else to bring us the happiness and, and fulfill that void that we ourselves need to fill um, with our own self-love. Um, and that comes after many lessons, um, you know, because we, we often feel at home with somebody else and when they're not there, it feels like we're missing something, which, you know, in, in, in fact, it is true. You know, that is true that we are missing our person. We do feel more complete when we are in union with our person. But we have to learn to become uh, feeling like complete within ourselves without our person as well. And that's where the true healing and um, that's when they're ready to join us, when they're able to do the same thing. So that's the whole point of healing and separation um, is to get to that point where you are whole within yourself. You are healed um, and strong, okay? And um, everyone's gone through a massive journey with that. You know, it's really hard sometimes um, to embrace ourselves and love ourselves. And that's part of that is breaking away from those karmic ties and patterns and circles with people who have come in to teach us these massive lessons which can strip us of our confidence, um, can really make us question ourselves. But they are our greatest teachers, guys. Okay, all the karmic people, our family are, can be karmics, okay? Family members can be karmic. Our uh, exes, you know, our exes can be karmics. Um, so there's so many lessons they do confront us with. Um, and it's a challenge, you know? It's like our soul is being challenged, like bring it on, you know? This is what I've got to learn. This is what I've got to face. And if we don't learn the lesson, it'll repeat itself in another scenario in a very similar scenario, um, either through another person or it could even be the same person coming back into our lives and we get to see, okay, have we learned? Have they learned? Um, and if patterns are repeating, there's something wrong there, you know, even though I know for the highest good, um, <clears throat> for the highest lesson, it's not necessarily wrong as such. Um, 
but it's what people would call a red flag, you know? It's, it's like if you're noticing a red flag, that means you're aware, okay? You're aware of something that needs to be dealt with. Um, so just being aware of that. Um, some red flags are really bad red flags and some are not so bad, but just are bringing it to your awareness uh, that something has to be healed or dealt with or you need to be more assertive. Uh, whatever it is, you're, you're working on yourself, you're learning on the journey and you're getting there. And you might even have come so far as I call it leveling up. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like leveling up. I mean, there were so many times, guys, where I would repeat the same pattern in love relationships where I was constantly seeking the approval of the other person to love me and if they didn't love me I felt so rejected or if they didn't um, respect me I just kept going back for more it was so stupid but that's what I would do because in my mind I needed them I needed them to uh, or I needed to prove to myself that that person loves me how could they not love me or how could they not miss me or whatever it might be and now I look back and think, geez, I've grown so much from that because there's no way in the world I'd stick around for that. No way whatsoever. Um, it's taken me a lot of years and quite a few relationships. It's not that I was, um, like I was never in casual relationships. I, I can't do that. For me, it has to be an emotional, personal connection. So it was kind of like um, three-year relationships, but they were on and off. Um, and that's because... I wasn't loving myself and it could have been that that person wasn't loving themselves either so I was teaching them something and they're teaching me something even my twin I mean we've been on a massive karmic path together I was even questioning is he my twin like seriously how could he seriously be my twin um, I've questioned that a few times over the last 16 years or so but I keep being drawn back to that and it not, it's sometimes you can't even just look at it romantically. You have to look at it realistically as well. That, okay, our twin is our greatest teacher of all. Okay, if you have a twin flame, they are the greatest teacher of all because they are the ones that are really going to show you what you need to heal. Okay, they're the, the, the big mirror in life that shows you and reflects to you all the things that you need to heal. Um, to come into union to be able to heal the world we can't heal anyone else or help others if we can't help ourselves first um, so you know sometimes you know in the in the uh, twin flame divine feminine divine masculine dynamic here of runner chaser that kind of thing uh, it's usually the feminine that keeps chasing and it's the masculine that keeps running um, and as soon as the feminine stops chasing, the masculine stops running. And so there's this need then to, to look at themselves as to what's going on there. Um, so it's quite interesting. And, and you might be aware of what part you play in it. Sometimes it can be a role reversal. The feminines can run, the masculine chases. But whatever it is, you know, for your whatever, wherever you're at on your journey, it all comes down to self-love, self-respect self-harmony, finding that within yourself, getting confident in yourself, knowing where your values lie and your boundaries, no matter who it is. And your twin or whoever it is that you're drawing into your life, doesn't even matter if it's romantic or not, could be friends, family, you name it, are going to start respecting you because you're standing up. And, and, and you know, it's, it's funny because as we level up in life, and what I mean by that is like a cycle has come to a close. We've learned that lesson now. Um, what happens is we tend to find people moving away from our life, our circle. We have friends that kind of dissipate, that are no longer in our life anymore. We kind of just fade away and, and you know, they, they dissolve away from our lives. Sometimes we'll have a clean cut, like it might not end very well at all with somebody. And it's like, okay, we're over. That's that karmic cycle ended. Um, sometimes... Pa people from the past will come back in. I had a soulmate just recently message me not long ago, and he was, you know, messaging me and reminiscing on the past, and um, and I had said to someone I thought he would, might have been trying to initiate something, but I actually felt like it was more of a goodbye, and I thought, wow, that's just it was a beautiful goodbye, you know, and so that's a cycle ended. So no matter how you end the cycle, when it, wherever you're at in your life and you're ready to move forward. Um, that is the main thing is that you look back and you think, wow, I have come so far on my journey. There were certain patterns I was repeating or I was learning this with this person. And now I've finally learned it and I, and I have healed from that now and I'm aware of it. 
um, which is great because then you can go into other things with other people you know there's new opportunities and new doors that open up for you because you've leveled up you're going into the next um, phase of your life you know another chapter of your life it's really quite exciting so with the twin flames you know there can be a lot of on off stuff going on so they might you know some twins and I know from my own experience I had I think it was a seven year gap I'm trying to even think now I think it was like a a 10 year gap or something I think it was 10 years that we were not together and there was animosity and, and all sorts of weird crap going on and then suddenly we reconnected. It's like, what the hell's going on here? I was, did not even see that coming. So you, you'll have these things with your twin where you might think it's completely over and done with and you're, you don't want a bar of it anymore. And then bang, some he healing or miracle healing comes through and you, and you connect again or you reconnect um, and you're at different levels in your life. And you might even realize, wow, we haven't changed that much after all. We still need work to do. Um, which I actually had found out. <laughs> so that almost damaged me again when there was like the breakup again, right? Because we're not in, we're not together. And I have, well, in my mind, I have thought, well, that's it. I don't want to be with him. I, I do not want a life with him in this lifetime. It sucks. No way. <laughs> so I just send him love from afar. Yeah, you know, I do love him. I, I really love him. But it's, it's from afar, you know, I've got to send that to him, that love and light. I've, I've actually come, come into forgiveness. That is a huge thing, guys. I know you hate hearing it. But seriously, when you come into a place of surrender within yourself and you are able to forgive, I am not kidding. It is the most serene, calm feeling you will have in your life, in your body, in your heart and soul. And I know that from firsthand experience. And I never, ever thought I would ever forgive him for the things he's done to me. Um, yeah, and that's as far as I'll go. I won't go into personals, but you know what I mean? Like if you've been really hurt by somebody and it's like to the point where you feel like I used to feel like I didn't want to be here anymore. The pain was so unbearable. Um, and once again, it comes down to self-love, doesn't it? So being able to not give my power away. Don't give your power away to someone else. I don't care if they're your twin or not. Don't give your power away to someone else to, you know, it's giving them that responsibility also to make you happy because if they're a damaged soul, if they're wounded and if they've got a lot of their own karmic lessons, etc., to learn, they're going to be no good for you in that way. They're not going to be able to lift you up and heal you and make you feel reassured or secure or, or give you the love you need. Or whatever it is you need right then and there uh, you've got to come into that acceptance of okay they're on this part of their journey and I'm on mine and we've got work to do you know individually separately and um, you know they say in separation is where the healing occurs so it has to because when you're together you're triggering each other and you're triggering all that stuff that's unresolved not only between the two of you but that you're triggering each other from past hurts okay from past lives even that is still coming up in today's um, where you are now okay because we carry stuff from our past lives even in this lifetime that we need to deal with it's our past karma so that's what's happening with the twins they're triggering each other so that that stuff's going to come to the surface and finally be like you become aware of it and you think whoa what is this i don't like this feeling this is full on why are you doing this to me and you realize you look within and think holy moly like this has been within me it's not even to do with my twin like this has this has uh my twin has triggered all the things in me that i've been carrying for years and so it's time to look within, time to become aware of it, time to maybe write down some things and think, okay, what is this and what do I need to heal and why is it happening and where did I feel this last time? Where was the first time I ever felt this that I can remember? Uh, and you go back, okay? And obviously a lot of us need counselling with that because it's massive. Uh, I have had to have counseling. I'm not afraid or ashamed to say that. Like, you know, we need it in life because it's a heavy stuff. Like we, ha we are living in a 3D world with heavy stuff and some of it can be very toxic. Um, and you can have people in ex like external circumstances outside of the twin flame connection that are affecting and damaging the union. So that's why you've got to get stronger in yourself and pay attention to yourselves. The, the, the sooner you t like kind of take that attention away from each other in terms of and I'm not talking about the love I'm talking more about um, 
just obsessing, you know, over a union or maybe there's hurt and, and, and anger and sometimes it can be hatred. You know, you feel like you really can't stand that person. You, you hate them, but you love them. And it's, it's this horrible dysfunction, you know. So it's really about coming within, looking within, reaching out to a faith. Do you believe in God or Jesus or the angels or a higher power? Do you have ancestors that you connect with? Do you, even your high, own higher self, okay, can be someone that you can look up to and, and receive those answers from. Um, and it's so helpful. That's what you need first and foremost is that support next to you or even within you. Um, so it's such an amazing journey that you can go through once you surrender to that and just let it go and let it flow, as they say. And it's not easy. I mean, I might be saying the way I'm talking might seem like it's just oh so easy, but it's not. It's seriously not. There's been many times I tried to forgive my twin and I was adamant I will never forgive him for what he's done. And yeah, I just it's just amazing. Like it wasn't even so much a conscious thought of oh, I'm going to forgive you now or even trying to sit down and, and do a ritual or a prayer or whatever for him. I think it was more that I put my focus on myself. I, st I stood back and I thought, I'm not going to give this any more of this power. I don't want to be bitter. I want to be better. So don't be bitter. Be better because you're going to heal in yourself and grow. Um, and that way, your relationship, your connection, whether you're together or not, you know, close with each other or apart from each other is going to heal. And it first starts within your own self because you don't want to be carrying all that stuff as well, guys. It's, it's, it's horrible to carry all that pain and hurt. And it's not saying that you can't have pain and hurt because that's all part of the process and the journey. We have to, uh, you know, be aware and accept what comes up with that. But we don't want to carry it to the point where it's festering within us as a wound that keeps, is, is an open wound. We want to be able to come to terms with it and embrace it and as part of our journey and say, I'm all right with this, you know. Um, it's not going to stay around for long, you know, this is something I don't want to carry forever, but it's teaching me things. And what is it teaching you? That's what you've got to work out. So, wow, I did not expect that intro as usual when these long intros come in. I just feel channeling, you know, channeling coming through, sharing my story with you. And yeah, I mean, there's still stuff uh, in the middle that I'm going through with my twin right now, but I'm leaving it up to God. I'm leaving it up to the universe. I'm just surrendering completely um, and trusting in that, uh, you know, everything's going to work out for the highest good of all involved. Um, so guys, that is the intro. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to get into the main thing now. Do you love my little tablecloth here thing? You know what this is? This is actually Christmas wrapping paper I put on here. It's so gorgeous. So let's have a look. This is the Divine Masculine's energy for today, the cards. Okay, Divine Masculine. I'm going to see what's going on with them. And this is the Divine Feminine's cards today. This is the Psychic Tarot for the Heart cards. These are the Arcanum Tarot. Whoopsies. So, okay, let's have a look. So we get the energy of the Divine Masculine, please. What energy is the Divine Masculine sitting in right now, please, Spirit? Divine Masculine, what energy is he currently sitting in right now regarding the, his Divine Feminine? Divine Masculine, what energy? energy? Wow, there's quite a few here, guys. Compassion. Thank you for caring when nobody else did. Dark. I am afraid you're not going to want me if you see the truth. And sweet. I love the sweetness of your soul and the taste of your kisses. We've got two more. I don't know which path to take. Choices. And I know what you want. Manipulation. So there's conflicting things going on here once again but I feel like the divine masculine is saying thank you for um yeah he, he's looking within himself there's some shame here I feel regarding his darkness regarding his own pain regarding things that are unhealed maybe things he's too scared to look at within himself and put that light onto but he's saying thank you divine feminine for you know tolerating me through those times i love your sweet nature you know you're so sweet but i don't know what to do i feel like i'm being manipulated in my life and maybe there's trust issues maybe in, on one hand he does feel your compassion he's thankful for it but he's worried that are you manipulating him Maybe you're being sweet and buttering up to him. 
because you want something. There's a, there's some kind of suspicion there, maybe some paranoia with him. Uh, it's interesting. So it could be that he's a little guarded. Let's have a look. What's the energy? Wow, there's so many. There's the Empress and the Moon. Okay, I'm not doing reversals today. This is a subconscious realm. Yeah, he's not sure what you're up to, Divine Feminine. He might feel that you're being a little mysterious, a little secretive, like he might be wondering what you're, if you've got hidden motives. Um, but he sees your beauty and he's drawn to you. And he does see that you are a nurturing, compassionate person and a very sweet soul. So it's like he's al almost like he is torn, you know. It could be that there's external people in his ear what making him... Um, question what do you want with him because I hear him say what do you want with me you know it's almost like that song what's that song what do you want from me what do you want from me I can't remember his name Adam Lambert or something but that's the kind of feeling I get is that he's, he's like what do you want from me like I can't give you anything I'm in a dark place here trying to overcome my own shadows um, and you know I don't want to feel like I've got an ultimatum but at the same time, he sees that you're absolutely divine. You know, you're, you're the divine empress, the divine feminine, who can bring in peace and wisdom into this. Like, you hold it, but maybe he's afraid to, you know, open right up where you might be able to hurt him in some way. Um, it's quite interesting. We've got the Pisces energy and the Taurus Libra energy there as well. I'm going to see... Um, yeah, Pisces, Cancer. Well, it's usually Cancer, but yeah, I see it as Pisces as well. Um, yeah, so he might be hiding away in his shell a little bit right now, but he is thinking about your compassionate nature and the fact that um, you might be a mother too. Divine Feminines might be a mum. Uh, you know, it could be that you have children together, but there's something there. So what is the Divine Feminine's energy? So he sees her as maternal, but she's also very strong in herself. She's not wishy-washy. Um, so he sees a Divine Feminine might want something from him. Is she just being nice to him because she loves him, or does she want something? So the Divine Feminine is stuck. I can't break out of these illusions and this one wants to come out. There's a burning rage inside of me, anger. So the divine feminines are possibly feeling trapped in a situation, trapped in their own anger and pain that they can't, um, let's see, that's the one, strengthening bonds, okay, yes, she's trying to move on. This is the Divine Feminine trying to move on, okay, away from this connection, I feel. And, you know, this is the thing, like, she wants to become strong in herself. And I think in some ways she might feel a little bit stuck to this connection because there's anger still there. There's still some burning rage, okay, underneath everything here. And if the Divine Feminine, if you're a Divine Feminine and you don't, agree with that this could just mean that there's some unresolved anger within you where you feel like you just can't break break free and move forward into a strong path it's very strong independent divine feminine being able to just uh embrace the new chapter the new change move you know move onwards and upwards plant that seed and um but for the majority of you, I do feel like you just want to turn your back on this and move away from this because you've had enough of the connection now. You just want to move on and uh, focus on you, which is interesting because we said that in the, in the intro. Um, so, yeah, there's a burning rage, some kind of anger going on there. And it could be that because he is in this cycle of, you know, being appreciative of you but maybe not showing it so much maybe he he's still uh one foot in one foot out not making a decision because he doesn't trust okay maybe that's another thing there so how is he actually really feeling for you let's get to the nitty-gritty how is he feeling for you so codependent my hands are tied so there's something that's in his life right now that he might not be able to uh come out from it could be that he's got children it could be that he's got family who rely on him someone who's ill in the family maybe there's a marriage he's in or another relationship there's some something there that's affecting this uh, he could be afraid also that if you do jump in together are you going to become codependent together um, <clears throat> seven of pentacles is waiting awaiting results patience for the reward yeah and we've got the four of swords so at the moment he's just feeling 
Oh, he's in two minds because on one hand he feels like um, he's he's at peace on being on his at what am I doing? He's at peace with being on his own. I feel like he needs to sit back and just heal at the moment as well. Take some time out to reflect on what it is that he really wants to invest in and build with you. I think he's confused about whether he wants to invest in this or not. Um, he's possibly thinking he's better off just being on his own for a while. Um, he's, he's very scared of this codependent uh, energy. So what are you feeling for him, Divine Feminine? What are you feeling for the Divine Masculine? So your light illuminates my mind and soul inspired. And we've got share the love. So she's thinking, like she wants to reach out and open up her heart to the Divine Masculine. This is why there's a, a contradiction going on. So on one hand, she loves him. She sees the light. See, she sees the light. Um, but at the same time, she's also trying to embrace her own freedom and independence and heal herself and not have to rely on him to, you know, make her happy. Once again, it comes back to that intro message I was talking about. I feel uh, that she sees this beautiful light within him. He has inspired her in a lot of ways. She does light up when she thinks of him and sees him and feels his energy around her. She wants to open her heart. Look at this. See the, the love heart's got like a, it's got the light coming out, but it looks like it's been broken and put back together. So it's almost like she's been through a journey with him. She is willing to forgive, but at the same time, she's, she feels like the only way she can really do that is stand strong. Um, but there could be some other issue here. It could also be that there's someone that she's angry at someone else in his life for preventing this strong bond, you know, get, you know, something that's a beautiful relationship that, that can, um, like this is a plant, the seed planted, right, to, to be able to grow and blossom and, and beautifully grow into something strong. And maybe she's angry also because not only is he not making the choice, um, but there could be something else in his life that's getting in the way as well of this union. Um, because there's a lot of love there for him. I feel like in some ways she doesn't want to move on. You know, she doesn't want to. Deep down, she doesn't really want to. Um, yeah, she wants to strengthen the bond further with him, but something's preventing that and it's really, really ticking her off. Um, so I just want to see what this is about. Okay, with the Divine Masculine, what's going on with this energy of his right here? So we've got Romance. Look at that. He looked at her just then as the morning sun was cascading over her form as she laid near him. He sat up and gently took her hand and kissed it. A simple gesture that in that moment spoke a million emotions without a single word spoken. So your Divine Masculine wants to be romantic, like he has romantic feelings towards you. Um, and this is how he wants to be open and vulnerable and expressive in that way with the Divine Feminine. Um, he's got very strong romantic feelings, but there's a lot of fears once again there. And he wants to make sure that he's got a clear mind as to what he wants to do before he, he makes a decision. And also the tortured soul. So endurance, you are worth fighting for, for the effort you put into life is what this person feels. This card represents a person who finds unity within the pleasures that pain can also give. No pain, no gain. It has long been said anything worth having is worth fighting for. They do not shy away from hard work, fighting for what they want, and the lessons learned from the process lead to a personal success that they feel molds character. And that's exactly what he's doing, is he's trying to find where his character lies. What does he want to, you know, what values does he stand by? What does he want to um, work on? And it could be at the moment too in some ways if he is in another connection he might be trying to you know he might be thinking should I just work on this where I'm at right now in this codependent energy whether it be a romantic connection or family member who's just codependent um, and he feels like he's just got to keep working on it regardless of how it's affecting the connection uh, that could be something and for some of them, it's their mother, for some reason. There's a mother thing. Um, but, you know, deep down, there's these romantic feelings towards the Divine Feminine. And he really just needs time out to clear his mind. Because I feel like he's being pulled in two different directions. It feels like, on one hand, he's got these feelings, this magnetic pull and, and attraction. And this wanting and passion for the Divine Feminine. But on the other hand, there's these 
fears, you know, of what do you want? Do you really want me or are you trying to trap me in something? Or it's like someone has been in his ear or it's just that inner voice, you know, the inner voice that's scared. So the Divine Feminine is saying here, what's hers? Misunderstood. One of the hardest... Um, burdens to bear is being misunderstood by other people all of us at one point or another experience looking into the eyes of another person and realizing that he or she simply does not see us the way we see ourselves and probably never will you are being asked to keep an open mind and heart about this and about others to allow yourself to absorb information as you receive it and look a little deeper in people so i feel like she's feeling misunderstood by the divine masculine Okay, she wants to extend her heart out just because she loves him, not for any hidden agenda. So she feels misunderstood with that. And then look at that third party intrusion. There is another person acting on their behalf to try and control an outcome in their favor. Be aware. Is this interesting or what? Like we just said this. So, you know, for some divine feminists, they might see it from their end that there's a third party on their side that they need to cut cords with. But I feel like it's more. Uh, talking about him okay there's a third party in his life here who is uh confusing things and, and he feels conflicted very much and as i said it doesn't have to be a romantic partner it could just be family could be a friend could be could be an addiction whatever there is is something that's keeping uh them apart and making him become paranoid or worried about what the divine mass uh, divine feminine's uh motives are here you know, and that's possibly why she's angry, because she's feeling it. She's feeling like, why don't you trust me? Um, you know, there's been pain between them before. Maybe that's also why there's this trust uh, going on. But he's got deep feelings for her. And he wants to make sure that if he does invest into her, you know, it's going to be for the right reasons too. So we're going to get a, a shadow message and a light message from each one, okay? Oh, hang on a minute. These are a little bit hard to do. <laughs> okay, shadow message from the Divine Masculine. So he says, I am scared to face you because you mirror to me all the things I need to heal. We did say that before, didn't we? And his light side says every time... No, I'm taking responsibility for my own life and decisions. So that's something he's trying to do right now. So he is scared because you are bringing up all the things that he's afraid to face. Um, but... You know, he's taking responsibility for his decisions and life. That's something he's trying to do. The Divine Feminine's shadow message says, I don't know what you want from me or this connection. They're mirroring each other in that way because he said the same thing earlier. I said I could hear him say, what do you want from me? She's saying the same thing. I don't know what you want from me. Like one minute I'm feeling that you love me and that you want me and then the next minute you're shutting down and, and you're acting weird. What's going on? And anyway, this is the higher self message. I'm making a conscious effort not to hurt you. So she doesn't want to <laughs> unleash her anger or rage out on him. Like she just doesn't want to do that. That's why she's trying to become strong in herself right now. Oh, gosh. Okay. And anger doesn't have to come out in full rage, yelling and screaming and throwing things either, right? It, it can come out in a snide comment or a smart arsey comment or a pessimistic comment or, yeah, right, you know, yeah, as if that's ever going to happen. It's that kind of energy that is like a, a very subtle bitterness coming through. It's that doubt, it's that pessimism, and that's part of the anger that the Divine Feminine's really need to address and look within and realize what that is um, and really behind that is hurt that's all it is it's hurt so okay let's have a look then all right what am I asking now I'm gonna ask what does the divine masculine actually want okay you might not know we can see that he doesn't really know um, but I want to be the one who stands beside you and assists you in all your success support he wants to be a support to the Divine Feminine. You know, he sees that she was supportive of him when he was undergoing a hard time. Um, so this is something he wants to do is return the favour. Yeah, look at that. He wants this to turn in a positive way. This is karma and fate and destiny. He wants this to be their fate, you know, to be supportive of each other, for things to turn in the right direction here. And we've also got the King of Swords. So he wants to be 
really clear-headed like he wants to know for a fact um, be assured of what he wants before he takes action um, so that's very important for him that he has a clear head that he's not being influenced by what the divine feminine's saying or wanting or in some some cases some divine feminines demand or or do kind of emotionally blackmail they can do that um, so he's trying to get a rise above that, rise above anything or another third party in his life that's causing confusion. Um, and when there's confusion, there's darkness. You can't see through the clouds, okay? So that's what's going on for him right now. He's in a state of confusion. So this is what he wants is to be clear-headed to make the right choice. This is really strong in his mind that he needs to make the right choice. So, yeah, so let's get a, a card on that one. So golden abundance, yes, because he wants this to prosper. He wants to prosper and grow and have that beautiful reward, you know, together. So he doesn't want to be making the wrong choice for things to just unravel and um, you lose out in the end, you know, the both of you. So what does the Divine Feminine want in this connection? What does she want from the Divine Masculine in this connection? So we've got, I can't get you off my mind, distracted. So maybe in some ways she's getting angry about that because she just cannot seem to move away from, you know, focus on him, the focus of, on him. And I've made a fool of myself, foolish. Okay, so some of the divine feminines have maybe lashed out in a text message or said something, or in some cases, some divine feminines can uh, write essays to the divine masculine on what they're feeling and just... Uh, lash out or unleash their feelings um, in some ways it can be um, through their own pain and hurt they can block the divine masculine they might block and then unblock and it's all this kind of crazy stuff and I've been there <laughs> it's really crazy believe me like when you're blocking and then you're unblocking and then because really deep down you're just trying to shut the pain out that's what the whole blocking thing is with fe feminines especially is to shut the pain out we don't want a bar of you you cause us pain and so that's what's happening maybe in some ways she has reacted in a way that's made her feel like a fool um, but she's annoyed too because she can't get him off her mind. She, she, it's an unresolved issue. That's why. This is why because it's unresolved. Okay, the stuff within her that's festering within her that she needs sorted. Um, but if he's not open to that right now because he's withdrawn by the looks of it, he's he's with, withdrawn and he's trying to figure out what it is he really wants. Um, and if she's coming from a place of um, like that sadness. And in some cases, uh, if she is, unbeknownst to herself, putting it onto him to make, you know, the choice or to make her happy in some way, he's going to feel a lot of pressure and responsibility with that. And also he's got other, other, someone else in his ear also pressuring him. So he's like, what the hell do I do? You know, so he's really got to pull right back and just try and clear his head and make up his own mind. That's what he's trying to do right now. Now, that's just what I'm getting for this message. If you're a feminine and you don't relate, but you can kind of work out what this means for you, then take that message, okay? So, all right, I want to get... This is the other message for her. You are almost there. So she's almost there with her healing. See, we see that she's just... You know, sometimes it's at the last end of the journey that we start to give up and think, oh my God, how much longer? And she's almost there. So she's going to get her answers. Um... Yeah, so just to know that those clouds, see, you're going to be able to see very soon what's going on. You're going to get the answers you need. So what is his action towards the Divine Feminine this month? What is his action? Okay, greed. I want it all and I deserve it all. So it, it looks like he may not necessarily make a decision towards her or, you know, whatever else is going on in his life. He just wants everything at the moment. So he's kind of in a good place, you know. So in some ways he might be happy where things are at. If they're not talking, it kind of gives him peace or whatever it might be that he needs right now. Um, and it's not that pressure, you know what I mean? So if he's holding, holding her at arm's length or whatever it might be or just not giving much to her, he's kind of controlling it um, for how he wants it to be. Um, and also if he if he is in another relationship or he's just getting all his needs met through family, 
friends, anyone who's enabling him in some way, then that's also what he's going to want. <laughs> so it's kind of like he wants his cake and eat it too in some ways. And loyalty forever yours. So he wants the Divine Feminine. He wants her to know that even though all this other stuff's going on in his life, he's loyal to her. But you know, I get another message with this too. I actually feel in some ways that other people are greedy around him. They want him. They're obsessed with him or possessive of his energy. And they just want all of him. They don't want to share him uh, with you, even emotionally. But he's loyal to you. Forever yours. Okay, that's another message coming through. So, yeah, there's anxiety. So he's going to be anxious about this. He's going to have, um, maybe there's insomnia for him. He's not going to be able to sleep at night. He's just up worrying about the fact that he might feel like he's being disloyal to you, okay? So it could be that, you know, people are holding on tight to him. Maybe he, maybe in some ways someone's using him for his money or, or you know, whatever it is. There's some codependent energy going on over there. Um, so he's up late at night because it doesn't feel right for him. He, he's like looking at his values. It just doesn't sit right for him, um, whatever's going on here. So, yeah, he's anxious. So he's going to be anxious, okay, about this uh, feeling like he's being disloyal to you in some way, Divine Feminine. So what are you doing this month? What's your action? Lies. I can't seem to do what's right. Wow. And happy, I want you to, I want to, I want to make you smile again. So what she's going to do, it looks like here is back off and maybe even make it, make out that she's okay. Okay. So it could be on social media that she's not playing a victim or anything. Like she doesn't want him to know that she's upset or hurting or angry. She wants, she's backed off and she wants him to now see her as someone who's positive and happy and living it up and just enjoying her life without him. Okay, but that's a lie. So it, it does look like that could be happening for her in that way. I just realized, uh, where is it? Oh, no, it's okay. I thought I used the wrong cards. All right, here we go. So let's have a look at this one for the Divine Feminine. So we've got lead. Yeah, she's going to take the lead. She's coming into her authority, her inner authority now to, to step forward with confidence, to fake it till you make it kind of thing as well. So that's something there. And she could be focusing on her career stuff as well, her money, things like that, just to try and make her happy um, as well. So we're going to get some message cards now, guys, because that's important right here. All right, so I've got a lot going on. <laughs> the Divine Masculine wants to say, you make me feel safe and warm. So he's missing that. He is missing that. And our union is meant to be because he's loyal to you. He knows that it's meant to be. He just has to work stuff out. And I care what you think because you might think he doesn't care any about anything I think. He doesn't seem to take my uh, thoughts into account. Like he's, you're misunderstood, see? The Divine Feminine is feeling misunderstood that he's just not caring about her and what her feelings are. And I'm trying to find the way out of that place. So that's that darkness. We did see the dark place he's in right now and that confusion. And marriage sounds good with you. Marriage sounds good with you. So there might have been some talk about it. And I think about you all the time. In the bottom of the deck, I can't stop loving you. Look at that. See, he's not... You wouldn't know. Like, he's just hiding away and keeping that hidden. Because there's romantic feelings there. We saw that. So the Divine Feminine says I want you to make love to me all night long and again in the morning and I don't want anyone else and can we can we start again I love you and I know that you love me and when you treat me like I'm nothing I want to die and you are always in my head and I can't forget you yeah, see that distraction, like she can't get him off, uh, out of her mind. I'm still wearing the smile you gave me. And I miss talking to you about the little things. It's those things that mean so much. And on the bottom of the deck, I love you so much it hurts. So there's a lot of love here for each other, absolutely. Um, but there's a lot of hurt and unresolved issues and the need to stand up and be strong and there's just an awareness that can't, needs to come up for that for the Divine Masculine as well in terms of stepping up and standing up to people who are influencing him. 
So many things remind me of you. And I bury myself in work to forget you. And I love you unconditionally. Okay, so I just had to stop my uh, camera and restart it. So uh, he says, so many things remind me of you. And because of that, I have to bury myself in work just to forget you. I have to be busy. I have to get busy. Because every time something reminds me of you, I'm becoming pulled, you know, I get pulled in your direction and I start thinking things and I miss you and I love you and I want to be with you, but I've got all this other drama going on and I don't know where I'm meant to be in this connection, but I love you unconditionally and I regret lying to you. And for some divine masculines didn't tell her. She might have said, I know you love me and he might have said, no, I don't, or he might have just shut down, might have fobbed it off. Um, or some other thing he lied about, but he's regretting it. And I want to tell you how I feel. I regret lying to you. I now want to tell you how I really feel. So the Divine Feminine says, We will be together again. And just being near you is intoxicating. So there's very strong passion and chemistry that she just feels like love drunk around him. And I look for you everywhere. Oh, so sad. I wish things could be different. And you speak to me through music. So he could be a musician. She could be a musician. She might be just listening to music that, you know, she is really connecting with and feeling that he's talking to her through. So I just wanted to quickly ask, what is he doing about his third party connection? What's actually going on in that third party situation, please, Spirit? No matter if it's another person or his work or his um, family, you know, it could be romantic, family, whatever, an addiction. What's going on with that? Irresponsible. I can't keep it together. And I know, I know I've already screwed things up. Irresponsible. And there's a glass of wine, so it could be alcoholism. There might be drinking or drugs involved for some of them only. Uh, we've got also here, I'm afraid of opening up my heart again. So the karmic, whatever that third party thing is, has caused them to feel very irresponsible. They can't trust themselves to be responsible um, and are afraid to open their heart again. So the divine masculine is very afraid of opening up, th up their heart again. Um, because they feel like they can't be responsible in a connection. They just don't have it all together. They can't have it all together. So the high priestess. So yeah, there's still some secrets. There's still things hidden behind the scenes that he may not reveal. Uh, he's keeping his true feelings for the divine feminine secret, maybe even from the, the third party. Okay. So if this is another person, he's not telling them how he truly feels about the divine feminine. Um, he feels if he opens up that can of worms, there's going to be even more, yeah, more stuff that he just can't deal with. So what's going on with the Divine Feminine? What's happening with her healing here with that rage? So I don't know if I'm as strong as you think I am. So she's trying to remain strong. Um, that's what she was trying to do as we saw the action was make out, okay, maybe on social media or if he's in, if he, if they get into contact with each other and see each other, that she presents herself as strong in herself, uh, transformed. I'm not the same person anymore. So she is transforming. She is trying to, um, but in her own way, she's only, you know, she's faking it till she makes it. But she is, she is actually changing. And that's a really good thing. So that's what's happening. She's transforming her anger. She's trying to be strong in doing so. That just flew out. Ace of Wands. And embrace a new path. Embrace that new inspiration to reinvent herself. That's what that is. And the Eight of Cups is walking away. You know, emotion, emotionally walking away from something. Abandoning things that no longer serve her. Which is that sadness. That place she doesn't want to be and she doesn't want to be uh dwelling on this okay so let's get a another message card from the divine masculine wow no other can hold a candle to you you're all i've ever wanted and more it's interesting that fell on hers so i'm wondering if that's what she's saying to him yeah okay so we'll get a divine masculine message 
So I know that you are the other half of me. So he knows this. He knows that you are his person. You are the person he wants to be with. And I'm truly sorry for all the pain and drama I've caused. You didn't deserve that. So he lied about something. It could have been a third party. Maybe he, you know, maybe he was hiding another person from the Divine Feminine or vice versa. And that really pained her. I left you before you could leave me. I have serious abandonment issues oh, that I need to clear first before we can truly be together. Interesting, because we saw her, like, moving away from something as well. And that's funny, because I wasn't even meant to use those cards for hers. I just realized they were his cards, but it's all meant to be. Um, so, yes, he's saying uh, there's abandonment issues he needs to clear first before they can be together. And you motivate me to be a better person. That I wish I was as strong as you. You are my rock. You've inspired me to change my life. And I always feel like that's her message to him as well. Because there's inspiration here. There's a strong, you know, message there. Like, she doesn't feel as strong as um, she might see him to be. But he sees her as strong. He does see her as a strong person who's been through a lot. And the Divine Feminine says... You are on the, on the right path, 17 angels are guiding you along the way. So she wants him to know that there is help in the higher realms, uh, looking after this connection. And I hate the fact that I'm ignoring you and pushing you away. It just scares me to feel so deeply for you. I never had that before. So she also has recognized that this, you know, divine masculine is very special to her. Uh, even more to lose with this, you know. So it's, it's a scary thing to invest and open up your heart to this. Um, so she's saying, you know, I'm ignoring you and I've been pushing you away. Might have even blocked him. Um, and I'm sorry. It just scares me to feel this deeply. And there are so many unspoken words left between us. I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you so I can finally tell you the truth. And I think this is about the way she's acting. Like, I think she wants to... Because she feels misunderstood. She wants to uh, have a conversation about what's going on. And alignment with the Ascended Masters, 333, you are protected. So I feel like that's a special message from the angels saying that everything is aligning as it's meant to. The Ascended Masters are coming through with this, bringing protection Okay, into this. So let's have a look at some other ones here. He says to her, our time apart really gives me time to reflect. I've been able to look at our relationship with more clarity. And that's what we're talking about with the King of Swords energy and the Four of Swords that we saw before. Him needing time out to heal and process and get that clarity. And that's what's happening right here is that he is actually getting that. Um, he is having time to reflect, which is really good. This is his higher self. I am undergoing an amazing awakening. I'm finding myself along the way. Please be patient with me. So there's a lot of that dark stuff that he's trying to uh, heal and bring light to. At the moment, it's just pushed down. But I think even the third party, whatever's going on with that, as if it's an addiction or whatever, a person, uh, it's, bringing, it's going to bring it to his attention, um, which... He feels ashamed about, but he's going to look within and try and heal from it because there's an awakening occurring within him as to why he is the way he is or why he might have hurt her the way he did. Um, I long to run my fingers through your hair and hold you closer than anyone has before. And my love for you runs so deep. So, yeah, there's a, a deep love here he's holding secret. From the Divine Feminine, but also from the third party. If there is one there. And he says, I often withdraw. Look at this. I often withdraw to process our connection. It's where I receive greater understanding. And every time I see you in my dreams, I never want to wake up. So we can see that there's been restless nights for him. At night time, he is thinking of you. He's even dreaming of you. And when he does dream, he doesn't want to wake up because it's now... Um, you know, the good dreams, obviously, in his dreams and having to wake up to reality is painful. So what does the Divine Feminine want to say? You inspire me so much. I want to create beautiful things with you. So they could be very creative uh, people, Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, inspiring each other when things are good. Her higher self says we need to heal ourselves for union. We have an important mission to fulfill here. 
So she's aware of it, that they need to heal. And thank you for helping me to overcome my darkest fears and feelings of shame. So that's what he's teaching her. And we've got, listen to your inner voice. Please don't be influenced by what other people say. So she's saying to him, please listen to your inner voice. Listen to your heart even, you know, over what anyone is saying to you and influencing you and telling you about what you should do about our connection, about me. Don't believe everything you hear. And you are so sweet. Thank you for being so compassionate. So they both are thanking each other for being compassionate. Uh, with each other as well. So there, there is a lot of love there. There's a lot of hurt here too. So for the Divine Masculine, what's the message, the Twin Flame Oracle for the Divine Masculine? What's the, what's the card? Focus on unconditional love. Let it flow. So this is interesting because last week this came up for the Divine Feminine. And he does say here from his higher self, I love you unconditionally. Because as we know in the 3D, that's kind of... Uh, uh, impossible in the 3D as we know it. But in the 5D, in the, within our higher selves, we actually can unconditionally love our counterpart. So that's what he's trying to do right now is focus on loving himself first and foremost. Uh, loving himself to let it flow. Let that love flow. Okay, and compassion. Compassion is very important for the two of you. It's said it tw three times now. He says before, thank you for my... Uh, what did he say? He says here, thank you for caring when nobody else did. He's, he's recognizing that you are a compassionate soul. And you are saying, you are so sweet. Thank you for being so compassionate. So there has been good times between the two of you where you've been, you've, you've been there for each other. You've had each other's back. Uh, or it could be your 5D selves talking about this. But look at this. Be kind and gentle. And this is something he's learning to do. Is to not just have compassion for her. But also for himself. And for the journey. And for his own healing. And for others in his life as well. Compassion for her. The pain she's undergoing right now as well. Um, let me just get these cards that have fallen. Because they love to do that, don't they? We all know that. There's so many down here. How many? Hang on a minute. I can't bloody get it. <laughs> oh my god, they they fly on the ground in places I can't reach them. It's so annoying. Okay, there's just too many to read there, but let's do it. Okay, so the Divine Feminine's cards. Eleven, eleven. Doors are opening. She's got two cards that suggest a new beginning which is the ace of wands and that first one we saw which is a strengthening bond so doors are opening for the divine feminine if she's seeing 11 11 it's a reminder to let her know okay that there's new things coming new healing too. follow your heart she's being advised to follow her heart no matter where it leads her because that's that's the truth okay that the heart leads the way so let's see So that's another message I'm getting is that in the beginning when I saw that maybe she feels in some way that she's got to abandon this, this relationship for now and turn her back on it and become strong in, on her path. She's feeling stuck and, and angry at the way things are. This is what this is saying is that there is a door opening for her. She doesn't have to be keep looking back at the divine masculine. She still has to live her life, um, which eventually will lead them back together anyway. Um, you know, she can move through that door, okay, by following her heart, okay, no matter where that takes her with her passions in life. Um, even sometimes it can be another connection because there's more things to learn, whatever it might be. She might not want to wait around forever for the Divine Masculine to work out what he's doing in his third party situation or whatever's going on there as well. So, very interesting that. So as we know, all paths lead to home. And so at the moment, there's just a lot of healing that's needed here. So what's the journey? What's the card for the journey? Oops. Look at this psychic power. Trust the signs. So signs are coming into both of your pathways. And you're both going to notice it as you awaken more, okay, within the journey. You're going to notice that a special, um, maybe significant animals that come into your path that you kind of recognize as not just an animal. Like sometimes you have, and I've had this, where you have a, like a, a bird or something come into your path and it kind of, it's like looking at you and it's completely communicating with you. And it's not just like any other bird that comes up to you. It's, it's quite remarkable. 
and that's what's going to you're going to see all these signs you're going to you might see repetitive signs too like say for instance you do you do see a crow okay you might see a crow on a, a billboard somewhere you might see it on the internet you might see it constantly just come up on your path when no matter where you are it could be in a in a TV show that you're watching it could be that you keep seeing the words the crow the crow this is just a sign to look up the meaning of the crow uh, or or any other animal it's just an example that comes into your path it doesn't even have to be an animal it could be numbers like the feminine has 1111 11. she's seeing 1111 11 as a reminder doors are opening move through them with with faith and trust um Follow your heart, okay, um, because it's going to lead you somewhere you need to be for your further healing and leveling up and, and you both will come around full circle back to each other if you're meant to be in this lifetime, uh, if he's doing his work also. So that's the main thing is to notice the signs that are coming in. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Reunion, coming back together. Trust the signs that are brought your way. It might bring you away from each other to start with. Okay, because you still need other things to learn in life. You need to help other people in life. There's a purpose that you need to individually do as well. Um, but in the meantime, trust the signs because you will come back together. Trust the signs that you are coming back together. It could be that you see each other's names, um, that you, you're hearing each other's names somewhere. Um, anything that reminds you of them. He's getting constant reminders of the feminine, uh, which is making him miss her. But at the same time, it's a reminder to him, even to, for his soul, that they're going to come back together. The solutions and decisions are being made here. And that's what's going to happen. That in order to come back together, they need to be able to make the right decisions. And things are going to work out in the end. Just trust what you're getting. Trust the dreams that you're getting or any downloads that you're getting from spirit as well. Um, all that stuff. So let's get another card here. It's really, really quite powerful, this reading. So palm tree, stability, security, permanence, growth, endurance, flexibility. And that's where you're going to be at, both of you. So with the palm tree, you can imagine like, you know, I've seen them in, um, in Australia here <clears throat> on, the north, uh, on the top coast there. On the north coast, we have cyclones and there's palm trees. And half the time they survive, okay? <laughs> well, most of the time they survive because they're able to bend, okay, through the trauma, through the um, experience, that the challenges, they can bend. They don't always break. Hardly ever do they break. So it's like being flexible through it. You know, you move with it. You don't move against it. Resistance equals more persistence. So if you're resisting the changes that are coming your way and the doors that are opening up, then you're just going to end up breaking because you're trying to fight and, and you know, uh, bash on a closed door like you can only get so far so that's why I feel the divine feminines are ready to move forward turn their back on this for now and move forward and learn what they need to um, but she still wants to have a com conversation with him at some stage to to tell her no to to uh, tell him uh, explain something she wants to explain something to him and in time it will be explained um, just like the Divine Masculine is still undergoing lessons with this other, this darkness and other things that are going on in his life, she can't be worried about what he's, what, what he's being told or being influenced by. That's his lesson now. Um, but, you know, with this, focusing on unconditional love of, of himself is more, more, most important right here because it's going to bring in understanding and compassion for her as well, for her journey and what she's, why she's had to do this, why she's had to walk away from it. So, okay, the Divine Masculine, talking, interested, conversing more, awaited message arrives, text, call, email, hoovering. So it looks to me like he wants to come forward and talk to the Divine Feminine. He wants to um, maybe also explain something. He might want to reach out to see if she's okay, uh, whatever's going on there, he wants to make contact. And the Divine Feminine... And this could also be, if they're in complete no contact, this could just be that he's talking to someone about it. He's wanting to get information and, and guidance, you know, advice on how to progress in his life. And the Divine Feminine is heartbroken, deeply hurt, sad, separation, breakup, feeling lost, grieving, mourning. So that's why she's picking herself up and thinking, I just need to abandon this right now. I can't be giving this any more attention or energy. I'm not getting anything back. Um, because he just isn't in a place to give it right now. All right, so let's see what the 
advice card is for the Divine Masculine. Wow, there's two that have come out. That's interesting, it's on hers again. <laughs> so it's interesting, isn't it? If you get nervous, focus on service. Put your entire intention on answering the question, how can I make the world a better place? And the law of attraction will automatically take care of your needs. So that's something he's got to do is focus on why he's here, his life mission. He's, he's probably a bit nervous about where he's next got to go in life. But he's got to, you know, once he focuses on helping others and... Um, you know, masculines, like, they need to be needed um, in the world. So if he feels like he can help others and he's, he's feeling good about himself with that, that's going to help him get through uh, his lessons, everything he's, he's learning here, um, building his confidence up, stuff like that as well. And integrity, align your actions so that they match your values and inner knowingness of what's right for you. And that's what he's learning is to speak, like walk his talk basically, um, not say things and then back off or back out of it. Don't promise things that he can't fulfill or deliver. Um, and that might have been something he felt like he couldn't be assertive with the Divine Feminine at the time and tell her, you know, a certain thing. He lied about it. Um, so he's, he's learning about integrity. Like, sometimes just saying it how it is and, and spilling the truth, yes, it's going to hurt, but it's a lot better than hiding away and making excuses or blocking or ghosting or, or just outright lying. Like, telling the truth is hurtful sometimes, but it's a lot better than the other stuff. So he's learning that. And the Divine Feminine? What's she doing? So the Divine Feminine is learning to release stuff, okay? So work with Archangel Michael to let go of what no longer serves you or your purpose, and that's what she's doing. She's now surrendering, walking away. Yes, she's heartbroken having to do so, but she's following her heart, knowing it's, it's going to lead her somewhere else uh, at this time. And she's going to embrace her creativity, perhaps, of singing and dancing, and that's what she's being asked to do. Express yourself and awaken your psychic senses through the magical power of music and movement. Now, we saw before that she says, you speak to me through music. So either the Divine Feminines, you know, they're advised to listen to music that's uplifting, Something that's going to help with the sacral chakra, I feel, regarding those feelings of shame and rejection. Um, yeah, definitely. So that's something very important to get her body moving, to sing, to dance, just to release pent-up energy of frustration there, whatever's there. Um, doing that is going to help her to feel, you know, elevate her spirits a lot more as well. Uh, what are we doing here? So this just fell on the ground. Wow, this is very interesting. Uh, the timing just wasn't right for us. It's very true. Like, I do believe this just wasn't meant to be at the time. Like, obviously, it's not gelling. There's things to still learn. Um, this time apart is giving him time to reflect as well. So he says to the Divine Feminine, Reflection. See all aspects of yourself through the reflection of the one who mirrors your hidden self. Look at that. <laughs> so she is being the reflect. It's so interesting. She's being his mirror. She's reflecting to him all the things he needs to heal. And he's, he's actually looking. He's looking in the mirror and looking at that. And what's that Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror? I can't remember it exactly, but that's what's coming to me. And the Divine Feminine says, wow, she's got Gaia here. So connect to the pulse of Mother Earth. She will guide you through this time of change. So she's telling the Divine Masculine to ground his energy. Sit in and meditate, right? Sit and meditate, take time out in nature to really come back down to Earth and ground his energy so he can get that clarity he wants as well. And I'm pretty sure... Yes, I've got one more thing of cards here and then that'll be it for the reading today, but... This is just absolutely amazing. So, the Divine Masculine, please. So, the Divine Masculine is in the process of taking that mask off because he's been in denial. Um, and that's just a process. See the grey clouds here as well. So, as soon as he takes that mask off, he's going to see very clearly as to what he needs to, you know, what this might mean for him as well. And to have faith. Have faith in the journey. And the Divine Feminine... Divine Feminine is sincerity. So she's coming from a sincere place. She doesn't want to be angry and upset. Like she, she wants to sincerely come forward. 
Well, she's also got to, yeah, she's also got to realize too that when the divine masculine emerges after coming out from all of this, I feel he will be coming from a sincere place. Um, but this is definitely her energy as well. She's going to come into that sincerity within the next six months. So she's learning to break down her barriers, um, to really be sincere with herself as well, to really be true to herself as well, because there will be a celebration for the two of them. Okay, so I'll get one for the journey. Wow, look at that. So there is a commitment and there always is in the 5D anyway, but this is in the 3D. It wasn't the right time for us now, but it will be. We will be able to commit to each other and have that reunion and come back together once we have worked out and sorted out all this karmic debt that we have right now. Because it's just not happening. You, you're both triggering things that you're both not able to deal with just yet. Um, so you definitely need to deal with it separately at this time. But it's come up for your awareness for a reason, guys. And that's really good because it means now it can be healed uh, finally. So I hope that you have resonated in some way or you've been able to take something from this reading today. And I look forward to connecting with you guys next time. Love and blessings.